Hey guys, this is Nathan and welcome to the Gaming 4. Today in the Sunturn Map Editor tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a second type of quest. So today we're going to be going over a quest called the Item Quest. And pretty much what is required in this quest is for you to talk to the NPC and then collect a certain amount of items for the NPC in which case you will actually get the reward. So most of this tutorial video is going to be happening inside the files so we're going to be using Notepad++ today for this. Also I've got these two folders here. First of all here's the bundles folder which has all the actual assets in them and then I've got these folders here that are containing the NPC that I've created for this quest. So hopefully with all these two you guys can get a good picture of how to actually create this quest yourself and put it in place in your map. So before we get started in this video, I would suggest that you guys check out my previous videos on NPCs and how to even make them in the first place, including dialogues, because a lot of what goes into making this quest actually happens inside an NPC dialogue. So you'll need to know how to do that before you can even make a quest in the first place. So first of all, I want to show you a little bit of the NPC I've made so far. This is the code for that. You can pause the video, take a look at that if you need help with making NPCs. This is all I have for the English.dad for that NPC as well, and it's named Quest NPC. C2. That's just how I'm going to be keeping track of it. Next, getting into actually some of the quest stuff. This is the setup for the quest. So I'm going to explain it real quick here. So first of all, the basic setup of a quest, you need to have a GUID that's unique. You need to have type equal to quest and you need to have a unique ID for your quest. Secondly, we have the condition statements, which actually sets up what needs to be finished for you to complete the quest as a player. So first of all, you need to have the number of conditions. So conditions space one. If you were to have more conditions in this quest, for example, if you needed to pick up multiple items or multiple multiple types of items you'd have conditions 2 and then you could add a different condition in here. Next we've got condition 0 type equals item. This pretty much specifies that we are going to be picking up an item type in order to finish this quest. Next we've got ID which is the ID of the item that we need the player to collect. 67 happens to be scrap metal. That's what we're going to be using for this quest. You could put any other ID in there for any other item. Next we're going to use logic and this is actually pretty important. We've got greater than or equal to here but you could do less than, greater than, or equal to in itself and and each of those would work in slightly different ways. I will have a link to Nelson's official NPC guide and you can sort of look at those options there. But for now we're going to be using greater than or equal to and then the amount of six. So the player needs to collect greater than or equal to six metal scraps in order to finish this quest. Something else in here that you do need to add as well to your quest is that you have condition zero underscore reset. This is really important because after the quest is over, this removes the six metal scraps that you will have turned into the NPC. Now you don't have to have this in here if you don't want the metal scraps to be removed. So for example, let's go back to the world here and let me accept this quest. So we've got a little bit of dialogue and I'll run you through that. And on the side you can see collect metal scraps 0 out of 6. So what I'm going to do is give myself 67 times 6. As you guys can see I've got 6 metal scraps in my inventory. And at this point the quest on the side has disappeared because I have finished it. All I have to do is come back to the NPC and finish this quest. Now if I didn't have the condition underscore zero underscore reset, I would keep the metal scraps in my inventory once I collect my rewards. But since I have the reset in there, it removes them, therefore essentially giving the metal scraps to the NPC. So now as you guys can see, I don't have any metal scraps in here anymore. I just have the locale military ammunition crates and that pretty much finishes the quest for me. Now in order to set up the rewards, all you have to do is have rewards space one or the amount of rewards you can you want to have. You can have multiple things in here. You can give them experience, items, whatnot. You can give them reputation as well. And in order to give the player a, a reward type of item, all you have to do is reward underscore zero underscore type space item reward underscore zero underscore ID 43. That is the ID for the military ammunition crate and then all you have to do is add an amount and how many military ammunition crates you want to give them. So hopefully if you guys have checked out my previous videos this should all make sense by now and that's pretty much how you set up the quest itself. Alright so let's start going through this dialogue and actually looking at how we need to implement the quest into it. So first of all I've got four main messages for this dialogue. The first one is here. It pretty much just says hi pause my name is quest NPC number two. I do have the color green on there it's optional. 
how are you doing today? That's the initial response when you first talk to this NPC. Now there's quite a lot happening inside of this message. Um, first of all, we've got one page here that's pretty much just basic to setting up a dialogue in the first place. We also have two potential responses. So when the NPC says this to the player, there's two responses that the player can take, zero or three. So if we look in here, response zero says, do you have any quests for me? And response three says, I'm going to leave now. So those are the two responses when the NPC introduces himself. Also, if you look down here, I've got some extra code for response zero and pretty much what it says is use dialog 2002 respond with a quest and you've got one message that is actually using that that pretty much links message zero so essentially it's saying message zero is the only one that can use this response and it is also there's one reward as well and that is the reward of the quest itself so if you do happen to use the response do you have any quests for me it will give you the quest itself over here so pretty much the response with the quest this pretty much gives the player the option to actually see the quest itself it'll give them all the details about it it'll show them what they need to collect and what the rewards will be and then it'll have a option there to accept the quest or not when you do accept the quest that's where the response reward comes in. So the one reward to accepting this quest is that you are given the quest and at that point you're able to continue the quest and complete it. So that's the code that goes into that. Alright, so the rest of these messages are actually used mid quest. And let's talk about the conditions here because the conditions really decide which messages the NPC actually gives the player or responds to the player when they talk to him. So first of all, in order to set up a condition on your message itself, you got to do conditions space one. You could do multiple conditions if you want, but in order to keep it simple, I'm just doing one here. Next you have to have the condition type for the condition that's going to be on the message and the type we're going to be using is quest. So essentially this condition is going to test if something about the quest has happened and so the logic for this is going to be equal and what we're checking is that the quest ID of 20,003 which is the quest that the NPC will give the player is at a status of none. So if the quest is equal to a status of none then the player will be able to see this message from the NPC. So essentially if we haven't started the quest the NPC will introduce himself as this and that's pretty important to have that. So for the rest of these messages, each of them will have some sort of condition added onto them. For example, this is the condition that happens when the quest is active, the status is active. This is the one where the quest is the status of ready to be completed but not completed. And this is the one where the status is completed and you can't start it again. So look through here. Um, if you're confused about this, try to copy paste it pretty much into your own NPC's dialog and then look at how that actually functions inside the game. Next I want to talk about what actually happens when we've got the response dialogue here. There are actually dialogues 20,002 and 20,004 and they are required for your quest to work properly. Here's the dialogue 20,002 and it's really simple as you guys can see. It's got the normal setup of a dialogue. I've got the GUID, the type, and the ID. ID once again needs to be unique. Same with the GUID. And this one only has one message and one page to that message. So the one message that you can see here is you should be able to find metal scraps all over the place. Now there are no responses to this message because I will demonstrate it to you but it doesn't actually require a response so you shouldn't add one in here. Also I've got the dialogue of 20,000 and, four. and pretty much with this one, it's almost exact same, it just has a different text in here. Thank you so much for finding the metal. Pause. I will be able to make a house now. So let me demonstrate this in game, and I should be able to help you guys see why each of these is required when creating a quest. All right, guys, so here we are in the world ready to test this quest, and I should be able to walk you guys through where you actually see the screens of the quest and the code itself. So first of all, the NPC introduces himself as, Hi, my name is Quest NPC. How are you doing today? And you've got your two options. Right over here is where you see that he's using message zero. Hi, my name is NPC. How are you doing today? And there's the two options that you can respond with, zero and three. And you can see that these are set up with that bit of code right there. Now, something else to keep in mind is that the only reason this is showing up is because you haven't started the quest 20,003 and because you haven't started it, the status for that quest is none. So next we've got our two options here. If I press this one, it's just going to exit out of the conversation and I just have to go back into it. Also, as you guys notice, there's an exclamation mark here and the game does this itself in that if you're about to respond with an answer that's about to give you a quest, it'll have this exclamation mark. So next we have this screen here, which actually pulls some information from the English.dat for your quest. So first of all, the English.dat for your quest needs to have a name, kill zombies for quest NPC, 
I actually need to update that that was from my last video so if I wanted to change that all I'd have to do is change this here collect items for NPC two. also we've got a description this is outdated as well the zombies around here have become dangerous wipe them out I use that in my last video so I should change that as well collect metal scraps for the NPC and so once I load the files back into the game, uh, those changes will actually take place. For now, this is the place where you actually change that. Next, we've got condition zero, which is the condition that you need to complete in order to complete the quest. As you guys can see, this matches up with condition zero here. And all you have to do for that is some sort of description, like collect metal scraps, and then curly brackets zero dash one. And pretty much what this will do for you is it'll create this text here. Collect metal scraps zero out of six. And essentially the curly brackets zero and one are variables here that the map and the game will fill in for you. Next we've got the reward zero. As you guys can see, I only have one reward here, and this corresponds with this one here. Type item ID 43, which is the military ammunition crates. All you have to do is write in a description for that as well. Two military ammunition crates, and as you guys can see, it's displayed here. And it actually fills in the icon for that object as well. When we have these two options, we've got an accept and decline. And if we decline, it should exit, exit us out and send us back to the main screen. If we do happen to accept this, it'll actually give us the reward for this response. So this is response zero we're working with. And the reward for this is that it gives us the quest. So once I press accept, it should give me the quest and it actually sends me to this dialogue first. So pretty much this dialogue 20,002 is the one it sends me to right now. And that is this one here with the text of you should be able to find metal scraps all over the place. As you see, it says exactly that once you press F, it sends you back to the main dialogue, which sends you back to one of these main messages. So the message now that the quest has been started is not message zero anymore. Because we have the quest, if you guys look here, once we exit out of this, the quest will show up in this area over here. Because we have it, the quest is now active, but not ready, and it doesn't have a status of none. The, the status is now active. So pretty much, we've got the me message one that the NPC is going to give to us, which is, please find the metal. So once we press OK, or I'm going to leave now, either of those will work. You guys can see that the quest text actually shows up in the top corner. Obviously, that hasn't been updated. The top part hasn't. And we can start doing the quest now. All right, so I'm going to give myself, let's say, five of the six metal scraps. As you guys can see, it's updated in the corner as well. You can see five out of six have been collected. And if I give myself one more, it'll disappear because I have all six in my inventory. And the quest is now in a state of ready to com be completed. Now, because it's in a state of ready, as you can see, it's going to use this message here, which will actually be, have you finished the quest? So when I talk to the NPC, it'll say, have you finished the quest? And then I've got my two options that go along with that, which the responses available are one and two. So I will be able to respond with, I have finished finding the metal scraps and okay, I'm gonna leave now. So as you guys can see here, I've got a question mark with the response, I have finished finding the metal scraps. And that's because it's gonna send me back to response number one. And what happens in response number one is where you actually accept the quest and finish it and get your rewards. So as you can see here, it links to 20,004. This dialogue will be used briefly after you've accepted the quest and finished getting the rewards for that. Thank you so much for finding the metal. I will be able to make a house now. Also, it does respond with the quest so you can actually see the request itself right here and it gives you an option to continue because you have finished the quest and then when you press the continue is when you will get the rewards itself and notice that this response can only be given to the player when the quest is ready to be completed and at the end of this it'll be reset now this reset is important because it'll essentially finish the quest and say give him the rewards of the quest and that's pretty much when we'll be done with it so once i press the continue it'll send me to the dialogue that i the extra dialogue that i showed you guys here and once i press f it'll send me back to the main dialogue itself and at this point in the main dialogue the quest has been completed and so it'll use message number three here which message number three says, I have nothing else for you right now. And that is exactly what the NPC has given me. 
And of course, I've only got one other option to respond here. I'm going to leave now. So that's pretty much it with the quest. If you do it correctly, you should get these two low caliber military ammunition crates. Obviously, there's a lot that we ran through just now. And if you guys are really having trouble with this, please go check out my previous videos. That's pretty much all I can do to help you guys with this because it is so complicated that I can't break it down in any other way. The one last thing I can do for you guys is to show you the code I have. So obviously, if you're having trouble with this, first of all, try copy pasting what I have here. Try duplicating it exactly. And then, um, you know, put that into your game. And then from there, you should be able to maybe adjust it and mess with it so that you can get it working properly. So now let's go over actually how to implement your quest and your NPC into your game because you do have to drop it into your bundles of the game itself. So first of all, we've got the files for the dialogue here. We also have the NPCs files itself just for the NPC. And we also have the quest files as well. So first of all, you have to do with the NPC itself is drop them into characters. I also already have it in here, so it'll just be replacing that. Next, with the quest, all you have to do is drop those files into the quest file. And I've already got those in there, so it'll be replacing those. For the dialogues is where it gets a little more complicated. What you have to do is create a folder with the name of your NPC on it, and then you've got all the dialogue files in there. So just drop those in there, so those will be put in place. Once you've done all of this, when you go into the map editor, you should be able to see your NPC in the objects section. So we're going to go and edit this map editor tutorials map I have. And inside of the objects, you should be able to filter it out, type in the name of the quest NPC, and you should be able to place it down inside of your map. So as you can see, this is the same guy. That's pretty much how you access the quest itself. So anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, hopefully it didn't confuse you too much. And those are pretty much the basics of setting up an item quest. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. And please subscribe if you want to see some more. I will see you all later. Listen.